Hello, Keith Rucker at VengeMachinery.org. Well guys, we're back on to trying to get this uh, left hand uh, modified square thread cut for the uh, reed lathe. And if you look around, you notice pretty quick, I'm not in my shop, I'm not at the museum. Some of you guys may recognize this fella. Hey guys. Mike Wiggins. We're at the backyard machine shop today. And you may say, well, why are you over here? Well, I went out to start this job a week or two ago. And uh, to do it properly, I really needed a follow rest. And we'll talk about a follow rest in a minute on my lathe. And when, and when I rebuilt my uh, Leblon lathe, when I picked it up, there was a follow rest that came with it. I painted it all up, restored it, cleaned it up. Went and grabbed it to put it on the machine and lo and behold, it doesn't fit my machine. <laughs> Sound familiar? Yeah. <laughs> so um, it kind of left me in a bad spot. Uh, I needed to get this job done. Didn't have, once again, I didn't have what I needed. Uh, so I started making some phone calls. I sent t Mike a text said, hey, you got a fall rest for any of your lays? He's like, yeah, we got one for the Kingston. So I've made a trip over here today and we're gonna actually do this last step uh, on this lathe back here. So tell me about this lathe, Mike. Uh, this is a 1440 Kingston. It's, uh, it's an import, Yeah. but it's a good lathe. This is one of the heavier imports that you can get. I've had it for um, four or five years, I think. Um, when I started working in the shop I'm working in, it was sitting in the shop and it was tore up. And, and I made an offer to fix it, and they made an offer for me to take it away, and I took it away and I fixed it. And, and it's been a good lathe ever since. Hey, if it works and gets the job done, that's all you matter. So anyway, I'm gonna come over here, we're gonna zoom you in, show you this setup, and uh, we're gonna actually cut these threads and get this job done. <laughs> here's the, here's the, the issue that I've got, is we're, we're, we're doing this um, square, modified square thread, and unlike a regular uh, 60 degree thread or even an acne thread, um, you know, on those kind of threads, when you're cutting the threads, most of your cutting is on this front edge of the tool bit. Uh, in this case, because it's more of a square thread, yeah, it's got a five degree angle, but almost all of your cut is all down in the bottom of that thread, uh, which really kind of makes it difficult to cut and it, it makes your tool pressure where instead of it going on the side of the cutter, all your tool pressure is pushing straight in. And to kind of counteract those forces going on the lathe, particularly this part being as long as it is and as thin as it is, you can get some flex in there. So we have this device back here called a follow rest. And this follow rest, as you can see, it puts some pressure on the part. You got some backup. And it's called a follow rest because it actually follows right along with your cutter as you're going across. It's different from a steady rest. A steady rest is stationary. This follows the cutter uh, going across. And this is what I didn't have for my machine. I thought I did, but I didn't. And uh, for this job, you know, we, we probably could have gotten by without it just making real light cuts, but I feel a lot better doing this job with the follow rest, which is why uh, I made the trip over here today and we're gonna cut this on this, uh, this machine. So anyway, we've got our compound uh, is set up on five degrees. Uh, again, we got a 10 degree included angle in there. So we're feeding in at five degrees. I've got an indicator here uh, that we can just kind of use to really see how far we're moving in each time. And uh, we actually did a test cut on another piece of metal and I, I know we've got to take about 55 thousandths depth here so we can read that on the indicator know when we're getting close and then we'll start doing some test fit. Now these are left hand threads uh, as opposed to right hand threads. So on, on, left, on normal threads you start on this end and you'll come in toward the, the chuck. On these left hand threads, we're gonna start on this end and we'll actually move toward the tail stock. And you just have to kind of put your, your feet in reverse to do that, uh, so, or your lead screw. So anyway, I think we're set up and we're gonna come over here. This is Mike's machine, he's more familiar with it, so I'm gonna let him do the cutting on here uh, just so that I don't screw something up. <laughs> Mike's over here laughing because now all the pressure's on him if he screws up. <laughs> but I, I think we'll be fine. But anyway, we'll, we'll get this job done. Um, one little thing I'll mention is, is if you look on the follow wrist, we actually made some little uh, tips to go in here out of Teflon. Uh, th th this is the original tips that were in here. And it's so wide 
uh, that we were actually having problems when it, you know, getting the cutter to start on this end. It, the, the cutter was here, you had so much on this end. By the time it rolled off the end, uh, it was hitting the, the, the live center. So we just real quickly turned these out of some Teflon and uh, uh, you know, that, that solved the problem. We had a little bit smaller bearing air, area in there and it was a real quick and easy fix. Nice thing about having a machine shop, when you need a little part like that, you don't have to order it, you just make it. It's a good thing about having two lathes also. Yeah. You don't have to tear your setup down to make one. That's a very good point. He's got a little uh, Monarch 10 E over here so we didn't have to tear down the setup to go make those. We just go get on the other lathes. That's why everybody needs two, three, four, five. I, I got six in here now. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get this job done. All right, so we've touched off our, uh, our tool, and we're gonna come in and uh, back to our zero. And we're just gonna make a little, I actually, I'm gonna give it a little bit of feed here. And we're gonna make a pass. We've already verified that's eight threads per inch and all that, because like I said, we did a test cut, cut previously. All right, so looks like we've located the part good. Let's go back to our zero. A little. We're going nice, slow, and easy. We're not taking real aggressive cuts. We're just taking all the cut in the bottom. Uh, before on that test cut that we did, we were taking about two thousandths per pass. It's going to take a little time to get this uh, through, but uh, I'd rather take my time and not mess anything up. So that's what we're doing. And uh, we don't have our speed up real fast either. Uh, again, just taking our time and getting it done. So when threading, we, uh, we, we always have to keep 
our uh, a zero on our cross slide at zero. And what I'm doing here is I got an indicator set up and uh, I'll feed in with the indicator and that way I can tell how much I feed in every time instead of using the dials. I just started doing it this way a couple years ago after watching Keith Finner the way he done it and it seemed so simple and more accurate. Uh, sometimes you have to cut threads and you don't have to wait any way of test fitting it. You have to hit it on the money off the machine and this is the best way to do that in my opinion. So. So we're you're back on zero on your dial right now. Yeah, and we've so far we've fed in on, on in one direction. We've fed in uh, about 18 thousandths. And I think we got to go maybe 50 thousandths. 50, 55, somewhere along in there. Yeah, so 55. We're right now. I'm feeding in about three thousandths of, of, of every time. Uh, and we'll back off that once we get in there and start cutting deeper. Whoever ground this bit did a good job. <laughs> it's making a nice little curly chip. I mean, it, it, it does exactly what it's supposed to do. Every now and then, even the blind squirrel finds an acre. <laughs> then we back out clear our part, come back down to our, our starting location. I'm using a DRO instead of dials. And uh, this is my X axis, which is our, our cross feed. Our Y axis, which is our, uh, our longitudinal feed is what I call it. But when I set up, I touched off on the, end, on the um, part and set a zero. And so every time I go back to my zero, I know exactly where the tool is. So we went in two, there we go, zero. We're, we're at, we've fed in so far 20,000, so we're feeding in about 3,000 a, a pass. So now we'll feed in, and this is actually how much cut we're taking. So the cross feed is, we take it back to the same location every time, and we use our compound to feed in at five degrees, and that's our depth of cut. So, and it's, it's, uh, Single side, in other words, if I feed in three, I'm taking six thousandths off of the diameter. So then we shoot a little shot of oil just to make sure everything's flow smooth. And we wait for our number to come around. And there we go. Well, guys, it's been an ordeal to get this little joker here cut. <laughs> uh, like I've said already so many times, every time we turned around to do something on this project, it seems like we didn't have what we needed. We needed to go do something else first. I had to get some, another machine going, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But thank you, Mike Wiggins. Uh, we have now got this uh, thread cut and uh, I'm gonna have to find a follow rest uh, to go with one of my lathes because I really thought I had one for that LeBlanc. And sometimes you just need a follow rest. And uh, you know, we possibly could have gotten this job done without having a follow rest on uh, my LeBlanc lathe, just taking a little bit of time. But with the length here and the pressure on it, uh, the follow rest was really the way to go. And uh, since Mike had one, it was just a little, uh, road trip over there and uh, had fun visiting with him as well. So we got this now ready. Um, the nut fits on here very nicely. Um, and it's, it's, fairly, it's fairly loose, which is what you, when I mean, you don't want it super, super tight, you just want it tight enough that it will, um, you know, come on in here without having any um, backlash in it. Uh, it feels good, so I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, I don't think I'm gonna do anything else to it. Uh, it you know, there, there may be just one little area in here that's just a least little bit tight, uh, but it's not so tight that you're not gonna be able to use it. So I think that with just a little bit of use that this thing will be just as slick as can be. So anyway, 
Uh, that's pretty much finished up, but still one more thing to do. So let me zoom you in here and uh, let me show you what we, with the last little step we have on this. All right, so the final little thing we got here is if you look on the original, this is the original one here. We got a little uh, key in here. It's, it's interesting how they keyed this. Um, instead of using like a Woodruff key or a piece of key uh, stock, they drilled two holes and put two pins in there and that formed a keyway. And if you look into the uh, hand wheel here, it's got a key in here. And I got to looking at that. The way they, they put that key in there, it's not a square key, it's actually a round hole. And they actually, looks like they drilled that. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how they did it. It doesn't go the full depth. It's not on the center of the, the part and uh, I'm not real happy with it. So, you know, I thought about, well, we just put a little Woodruff key in here, but it's, it's only just a partial depth of a Woodruff key. Let me get a, grab a Woodruff key and I here I'll show you what you mean. So if we, if we put a Woodruff key in here, you can see the, this is the Woodruff key that we would need to use. And, you know, basically it's almost, you know, not quite half of the end down here would not be engaged in this hole. This hole does not go all the way through. So I think what we're going to do though is we're going to put a Woodruff key in here and um, we're also going to modify the handle here and I'm just going to broach a real key slot in there, uh, one that goes all the way through. Uh, that should be a fairly simple operation. So uh, right now what we're going to do is go ahead and set up the mill and put the uh, Woodruff key uh, in the shaft. I've got the shaft mounted here uh, on the mill machine. We've got the right cutter in here. This is an eighth inch thick, half inch diameter Woodruff key cutter. I think it's a number 404. Um, and I've already kind of come in here and I've just basically touched the mill the, or the top of the Woodruff key cutter to the top of this right here. And I just did that by spinning it by hand uh, over the top until it just touched and uh, I locked things down. So now what I've got to do is I've got to move this down to get it on center. So I know the diameter of this. This is 7 16 of an inch. And uh, here I'll put my little math cheat sheet up here. So 7 16 of an inch, which is 0.4375. We got to get the center of this cutter uh, down to the center here. So we take that, divide it in half, get 0.21875. Uh, but that's going to bring the top of the, or the bottom of the cutter to on half. And we need to bring it down a little bit farther to actually get the size of our key that we're cutting. Our key is an eighth of an inch. So we're going to take, add half of an eighth of an inch to that, which is a point zero six two five oh uh add those together i come up with basically 281 thousand so that i've got to move this down so i'll just use my digital readout and we will go down uh 281 thousand 100 200 and 81 right there So we should be right on center now, and I'm just gonna get down here on the end and eyeball it, just kind of make sure it looks right. And you're up just a little bit high, but you can see we're, we're right where we need to be. All right, we're about ready to start here. I've already, again, got my cutter touched off on zero. I zeroed it on my digital readout. My depth of cut, I've got some numbers here. These are, uh, let's see if I can get that in the screen where you can see it. Um, these are right out of Machinery's handbook. So 0 0.1335 plus, or plus 5 thousandths minus zero. So I basically got a range of uh, 0 0.1335 to 1 point, 1, 0 0.1385. I'm gonna probably go right for the middle of that, which would be 0 0.136. And uh, I'll just look at that on my digital readout as I'm going through. All right, we will. Put a little oil on there and let her go. In about 30 thousandths, 40. If 
about 90 thousandths. Hundred thousandths. Hundred and twenty. Hundred and thirty. Two, three, four, five, six, right there. And I'm just gonna let it just kind of run there for a couple of seconds and let it make sure I got everything out of there and we'll come out and voila one woodruff key cut all right so we're gonna go ahead now and put this key in here we'll just uh tap it in place i'm gonna take a piece of brass now and drive it in there real good and hard key is installed. So now we're going to go ahead and start putting it together. First thing I'm going to do is just put a little drop of oil up on there. That is uh, where this next part goes on, uh, which basically just spins. This screws up into the um, compound on the lathe and uh, it pretty well stays put. Um, and then there's another little part that comes up behind it. And this one actually locks down on that shaft so i will um, screw that down now next uh, comes the hand wheel it comes up on here and it butts up against there now i've still got to cut my um i got to broach this out and put a keyway all the way through as it turns out i don't have the right size bushing for my broach set Hence again, something else I need for this. Um, I could make one. I'm just going to order one from McMaster. Uh, they're only a few bucks and it'll be here in a couple of days. I'll broach this. I'll probably just do that off camera and get it sent on to them. But uh, basically that'll go up on there and it will key in place and then there's a nut on the end. Uh, but that's pretty much uh, how this piece works. So as soon as I get that broached, we will get this in the mail finally sent off and uh project took way too long to get done but we are more or less finished with it so there she is all the components put together ready to go back some nice new threads nice new nut uh hopefully this is going to work out just fine for him uh, i really think this is going to be a big improvement over where he was and just as a reminder there's the old original nut. Uh, you can see it's busted out and the original shaft here, lots of wear, particularly down here in this end. Uh, not so bad up here, but these are really rolled over down here. So new shaft, new nut, new shaft, new nut. And uh, everything is all ready, except for that quick broach job. And like I said, I'll do that off camera and get this thing uh, packed up and on the way. Well, it's been a long time in the coming, but finally check this off the list. Uh, gentleman I'm doing this for is uh, named Jorge Pavia. He's out in California. I think I said earlier he was in Texas. I was incorrect on that. I actually had a chance to meet him face to face when I was out in California at the Barzy Bash a couple of weeks ago. And uh, it was a really nice chat with him and really enjoyed getting to uh, meet him face to face. Always nice to see um, the person that I'm doing something like this for. And, uh, with any luck, he can send us some pictures that uh, I can include and show you guys later on of his machine, his restoration, and uh, maybe how this goes on there and goes. But uh, anyway, off in the mail it goes uh, just as quick as I get that done. Probably be uh, Wednesday. I'll order the part uh, this weekend. It'll ship on Monday. Should be here on Tuesday, and this will be a five-minute job to, to broach that out uh, once I have the right uh, uh, bushing to fit this. That's a 7 16 hole. My set's got a 3 8 and it's got a half inch, but it doesn't have a 7 16 So uh, anyway, like I said, we'll just order one from McMaster, a couple of bucks. I'll have one next time I need it and uh, be done with it. So with that, that'll be a wrap, not only on this video, uh, but on this project. Thank you guys for watching. As always, uh, please subscribe to the channel. 
if you haven't already, and uh, hit the like button, leave me some comments, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Thanks a lot.